I'm going to, uh, I called two other people, and I think, you know, unless, unless there's some need, I'll, I'll finish with, with that. Um, so there was some, oh, I, I'm sorry, you're, you're. Yeah, yeah, so um, at Kurnas and this building last week, we had an evening on just war versus jihad, and your colleague in international relations at Matt Polyoke, I don't think I'm going to say his name right, but Professor Sahel. Sahel Hashmi, yeah. Hashim. Hashmi. Hashmi, that's it. Hashmi was speaking, and I, I wish he was here tonight because he had a very interesting vantage point. He said, number one, that as some of you have said, that he thought that ISIS would crumble under its own weight, that it was in fact fragile, that interestingly, he felt it had just very, very little support in the larger Islamic world, and that he said, you know, Al Qaeda was very good at quoting verse upon verse in the Quran, that ISIS doesn't do that at all. That it's declared itself as a caliphate, but really doesn't substantiate its program um, from a religious basis, which was kind of interesting to me. He was saying that one, for him, as a practicing Muslim, one challenge is that in the Islamic world, you know, there's, for better or for worse, there's no pope, there's no organized churches. There's no Islamic group that can speak with general sort of authority of we collectively are opposed to what you are saying. And so that, that, that creates a kind of dilemma, that, there's, that there, it's very hard to sort of muscle up contrary voices. He also wondered where the Arab, Arab state armies were in all this. It seems like they did play some kind of a role in the, the previous day. Um, but interestingly, he felt Obama was doing the right thing. I, I wish he was here tonight yeah, to we'll, say we'll, why. We'll get him. Um, because he felt that perhaps for the reasons you're saying, that uh, in terms of fascism or when do we and when do we not respond, that, that some kind of a response was needed. But I'm also just think a lot about what you were saying, Michael, in terms of responding to these groups as criminal syndicates. It seems like it would have been a better approach after 9-11 with Al-Qaeda from the beginning. And I said that at the time. <laughs> I remember. And, um, and that we just don't seem to have clearly articulated ways of doing that as part of our international foreign policy. I mean, military intervention or diplomacy of some kind. I mean, that we don't have a very, we don't seem to have a very good toolbox. Yeah. And um, I just, or, or sanctions. I mean, it just seems to be like we don't have uh, the new tools that we need for a very new world situation with increasing number of non-state actors mm -hmm. doing all kinds yeah. of things in the world. Yeah, I do think Vinny thought that. I'm, I'm going to let you ask your question now, and then uh, and then each of uh, us could, you could respond. Yeah, just a, a really brief question. Given uh, You mentioned earlier the uh, beheadings, mass killings, crucifixions. Um, it, given like this kind of behavior from what, what really is a state, do you, would you say that the international community has any ethical obligation to intervene here? In addition, we talked about you know, geopolitical reasons, but or is ethics not even a part of? I, I, you know, I'll I'll start this, and and each of you can respond to the previous points or others, and and then and then we'll we'll finish. Uh, I, I I go back to the this notion that this is a largely a criminal enterprise, and that these people are committing crimes, and that the proper approach is a is a law enforcement approach that everybody can agree to or try, try to find, try to criminalize the response but first of all that means you don't use armies you use courts you use the police you use financial means to cut off their funding um, and you you uh, you impose all kinds of, of um, criminal judgments on them and those who participate in them and work internationally that way. I think many, many more people in the world would agree to an approach like that, that these are criminals and should be punished, but by the international community, 
not by the U.S. acting as the horseman who comes in to save them. That's, that's my view. Um, and, but I'll stop there, and Ron and, and Vinny could each make some observations. And by the way, I, b before they do, I just want to thank all of you for your thoughtful questions and participation. I say that because I don't think anybody in this room knows exactly what's going on and what should be done. We're all, we're all struggling to get some, all of us are struggling to find, to, to get some understanding, some clarity, and I believe it's only possible in this kind of setting.